Uh, <laughs> and we, we appreciate you joining us on your Saturday afternoon or Saturday morning if you're from the West Coast. Uh, we're going to give it a few more moments just as people check in. Uh, just as a reminder, the platform works best on Google, uh, Chrome, or Mozilla Firefox. And if you have any issues, just a simple refresh can sometimes negate some of those issues as well. Uh, I will be moderating the chat function as we go and just introduce myself. My name is Dan. I'm one of the assistant directors of admissions here at Rensselaer. Uh, but you don't want to hear from me. You want to hear from our fabulous students. Uh, so we're just going to introduce ourselves as we see. So first up, we're going to hear from Cassie. So Cassie, if you want to do a quick introduction. Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Cassie Smith. I'm a senior aeronautical engineering student graduating in December, and I'm excited to tell you all about my experience at RPI. And next up, we're going to have Tahira. Hi, my name is Tahira. I'm a senior chemical engineering student graduating next spring. Um, and same as Cassie, we're excited to tell you about me and what I do. Great. Uh, and finally, we're going to have Mia. Hi, I'm Mia. I'm from Queens, New York. I'm a sophomore biomedical engineering major, and I'm really excited to tell you some about my experiences. All three of these fabulous student ambassadors, they're going to tell you a little bit more about what they do at Rensselaer, their nuclear experience. Uh, and then after that, we're going to have a little bit of time on the back end for any questions uh, that you may have. So if you don't see your question pop up as we go through, I might, might just be saving them for the tail end, just because it might be more relevant to the group as a well. whole. Uh, but we're going to get going, and Kat is going to go first. So we're all going to say goodbye for a little while, uh, and we're going to mute our microphones and send it over to Cassie. Awesome. All right. Hi, everyone. I hope you can all hear me, and I'm just going to walk through and talk about all about my experience at RPI. So just to reiterate, I'm Cassie Smith. I am the class of 2020, graduating this December in just about two months or so. I am studying aeronautical engineering, and I am from White House Station, New Jersey. It's in central Jersey. So it's about three hours south of Troy, New York, which is where RPI is. So I just want to start off of why I chose RPI so long ago. And some things that really stood out to me was just the options of STEM. I was always passionate about math and physics, and I didn't even know I wanted to say engineering until the very tail end of my senior year in high school. But I liked the, the possibilities at RPI. I could study physics, I could study math, I could study business if I really wanted to, and then there was always engineering to fall back on, which I eventually did end up in. I also really like the location. Troy, New York is about three hours from New Jersey, about two hours from like this two and a half of like New York City, the city area. I was far enough that I could go away to college, but it wasn't too far that I couldn't come home for a weekend or, uh, you know, be home this semester while we're off. You know, some students are in person, some are online. I also really liked Troy, New York has so many great food options, which I could tell you all about my favorite food. And there's just so many little restaurants that are awesome. Everyone on campus, I like to say, is passionate about at least two things, one thing related to their major and one thing completely not, and that's usually their extracurricular activity, and people can talk about these things forever. And it's just so cool to go there where people prioritize academics and what they're passionate about and what they're learning. People are really driven. I just felt so drawn to the student body on campus. There was also a lot of programs and clubs and activities that I wanted to be a part of when I was a senior in high school. I was always in music and I wanted to continue that and now I'm in the RPI pep band which we have pictures later on about. I wanted to be a tour guide and now I get to be a Rensselaer admissions ambassador and talk to you all about my experience at RPI. And I'm also really passionate about leadership and I'm in a leadership club. So it was really cool to that RPI had everything I was looking for. And then finally, the financial aid package was really competitive and really helped my family out. And these are some pictures of me and my family visiting campus before I was even a student, so a long time ago. Crazy. Uh, I just wanna give a, a little bit intro to aeronautical engineering and why I selected it. Aeronautical engineering at RPI is both aeronautics and aerospace. So if you're looking for aerospace engineering, it's kind of clumped together. I think in the future they're looking to separate them, but right now it's one degree, but there's three different kind of concentrations you can go. And one is fixed wing, and so that's like airplanes. One is multi-rotor wings, so that's like helicopters. And the last one is space. I'm really passionate about space, <laughs> just from the movies and growing up with the Mars rovers on Mars, Spirit and Opportunity, rest in peace to both of them. But I was just always so curious of how did they get there? How can I help people and how can I help get rovers onto the planet of Mars or beyond? So just looking up and being curious and wondering, that always motivated me to look into space and physics and things like that. And then I eventually landed upon aeronautical engineering with a concentration of space. 
And that's what I've been doing ever since. And it's really, really cool. Okay. Hopefully you can see all this. <laughs> so on campus, I've taken a whole lot of really cool aero classes and also some humanities, arts, and social sciences classes. This semester, I'm currently in digital filmmaking as my last humanities class. That's really cool to kind of combine my love of space. I'm currently making a NASA <laughs> feature film, if you will. Uh, but then also I'm in some aero classes or just engineering classes on finite elements and mechatronics this semester. In the past, I've taken really cool classes like space vehicle design, where I actually got to design a satellite that was going to rendezvous with a nearby comet. Uh, and then space flight mechanics was orbital mechanics. So I learned how to position different spacecraft or different planets and make sure nothing was going to hit each other. Propulsion systems looked at a lot of jet engines, but also rocket engines. How do we get thrust to get off the planet? Numerical design optimization. That was a cool class where I got to learn how to code to solve problems, physical problems, and I got to actually simulate what a tilt-a-whirl at an amusement park would look like. So that was kind of cool to see what kind of velocity that actually uses to cause chaos, if you will. And then Fluid Dynamics Lab, that was a cool one I took this past spring during the transition of from in-person to online classes, and that was cool that we actually got to work in a wind tunnel, and we got to put models in there, and as undergrads, we get to turn on the wind tunnel and watch and see what kind of experimental data we get to compare to true theoretical data. I'm also part of a leadership program called LEAP, that is Leadership Educators Advising Peers. And we do a lot of low ropes and high ropes kinds of courses. So if you've ever done a low ropes course or icebreaker activities, I do those for other clubs on campus. I've been part of the pep band <laughs> for four years now. I was a manager for one of those years and I play the sousaphone, as you can see. And the pep band plays at our football games, our ice hockey games for men's and women's. That's our D1 sport. So those are really big, really exciting games. Uh, we play at the local marathons, at the Welcome Fest for our new students. And it's just a really cool environment to play some music and bring some school spirit to the campus. And then I'm also an admissions ambassador. So I get to share all about my love for RPI and engineering with all of you. Okay. I had an awesome co-op experience almost three years ago in spring 2018. I applied for my dream job at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. This is really cool because JPL recruits from RPI's campus. They come onto campus every fall, they have a couple info sessions, and then they actually interview on campus. So that's how I got interviewed. And then after that, it was a couple of phone calls, a couple of video chat interviews. And then I had a seven month long internship from January through the end of July, where I moved out to California and I worked on the Mars helicopter which is actually about to land on Mars in February. It launched this past July, which is really exciting and just really thrilling. So that's there, me pictured with a model of the helicopter. Yeah. And then the next year I got to go back to JPL. This is last summer. And I interned again on a Comet Rendezvous mission design team. So that was a lot of research and design and development of what a potential spacecraft could look like. And I got to participate in a lot of different tech studies or um, design proposals. Okay, this slide does need updating as I <laughs> have slightly changed my future plans and actually this past week, but this past summer I did intern at JPL again uh, by remotely. So I worked from New Jersey, which is a really cool experience. I worked on the DSOC mission, which is going on the Psyche spacecraft to launch in 2022. I worked more on the mechanical uh, design of the flight hardware. I graduate in December 2020, and I just accepted a job, a full-time job at JPL. I accepted it two days ago, <laughs> so not many people know, big yay. Uh, so that's where I'll be going starting in February. I'll be moving out there to work full-time on different spacecraft. And then we'll see beyond there, hopefully my master's while I'm there, and then to continue working. Uh, so that's a little bit about me. I'd love to answer any of your questions, but I'll be coming back at the end. I'm about to pass this over to Tahira, and she's going to tell you a bit about her experience at RPI. So I'll just wait for her to come up here whenever she's ready. Oh, there she is. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Fantastic. Bye. Okay, so hello, everyone. It's me again. My name is Tahira Khan. I am a senior chemi here at RPI. I am originally from Goodyear, Arizona. So if anyone knows Arizona, I'm from like west of Phoenix area. Um, and tell you a little bit about 
my time at RPI, how I got here, and what I'm doing here. So I went to a liberal arts charter high school, very small um, student body. Our graduating class was only 36 students. So I knew that coming to college, I wanted to be in a similar kind of environment, not that small amount of people, but a good enough sized student body that I could still make new friends um, from different groups and organizations, or maybe just walking around campus or through mutual friends, and also have a good group of friends as well. So there's a picture of my friends right there on the right. They're so beautiful and um, so much fun to be around. Um, when I came to RPI for the challenging curriculum, RPI has one of the best chemical engineering programs in the country, um, and I know I wanted to be challenged. The beautiful campus, right now the leaves are changing and I'm always, every single year I enjoy seeing all the leaves change. And then also the staff, the students and the faculty are always so encouraging, making sure, faculty making sure that you're challenged in your classes and then your friends supporting you when you get a little too challenged or you just need some, um, to just hang out and relax. So in high school, some of the things I did to prepare for coming to RPI um, were attending a couple of um, summer programs, summer STEM programs, and doing my high school extracurriculars. So in high school, I was captain of the varsity girls basketball team for two years, got MVP every single year, so did love playing basketball in high school. I was on the chemistry in the chemistry club, and I also played flute in the chamber music ensemble. Um, and then summer of junior year, I think, I was I went to American University to participate in the National Student Leadership Conference for Biotechnology. And that is the left side, the picture with the little motor and the solar panels. Um, we wanted to make a solar panel slash water system that would filter water, but also provide energy to people in locations that um, didn't have clean water energy. So that was fun. And then also I participated in a program with MIT's Office of Engineering Outreach Programs called the Most Tech Program, where I got to learn about astrophysics and do a science writing course and also got to visit MIT's campus. And fun fact is I'm actually working for them right now as a mentor for that same program. So my coursework so far in chemical engineering has been very difficult, but I do enjoy the work that I'm doing. Um, one of my favorite classes so far has been Transport Phenomena 1 and 2, it's a two-part class, um, learning about how heat moves through different surfaces, how fast water has to be to produce like a certain thing, and just kind of analyzing the things that happen on a daily basis with the chemicals around us and seeing all the math and physics that is applied to those, so I really enjoy that. And I also like being in labs. So Modern Techniques and Chemistry was another one of my favorite classes. That's that little picture on the left side. We got to build our own um, apparatuses to do our labs. And I also enjoyed doing differential equations. I took statistical analysis as an elective. And then this fall right now, I'm taking chemical reactor design, where we get to do simulations to kind of project, pretend we know what we're doing um, as little chemies, but kind of see how reactors are going to work once we get into the workforce and some a lab class as well this semester. So my extracurriculars, I am a tour guide with Cassie and Mia, um, now frequent webinar um, recurring panelist. I'm the secretary for RPS chapter of the National Society of Black Engineers and the, which is a national organization and our mission is just kind of increase um, minority involvement in STEM and make sure that there are places for the ones for me and my friends and the ones that come after us to be included and um, welcomed into the STEM field and engineering field. I'm also a physics mentor for freshmen taking physics one as part of the iPersist mentoring program and I'm also on, I was on the staff for the annual Nesby SHEP Career Fair. SHEP stands for Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. And every single year we put on a career fair for the entire RPI student body, undergrad and graduate, so everyone can get some jobs. And then my professional opportunities. Last, this spring, this year, I worked as a intern um, for a water resource management department in Surprise, Arizona, which is close to my hometown. And I got to do a cost analysis product project for the plant's chlorine generation system. So if you didn't know, 
if you take salt water and um, electricity, if you take salt water and electrocute it, you'll get like chlorine, the kind of chlorine that you put in your pool, but don't try that at home. But that is what some um, water treatment plants use to disinfect their water. So I was trying to figure out how much money they were spending on that and whether they should just keep making their own chlorine or buy it from a manufacturer. And then from summer 2020 until now, I have been in most tech online facilitator for MIT's um, outreach programs office, as I mentioned before. And I love being a mentor. Um, really makes me happy that I'm helping out the future generations. And then my future, so I want to get involved with um, renewable energy or water filtration, anything that's kind of um, making the world less hot and <laughs> making sure people have the resources that, the resources that they need to survive and thrive. Um, I applied just yesterday. My application was fully submitted for the co-terminal program here at RPI to get my master's in one year in chemical engineering. So if I do get accepted to that, I'll be graduating again in 2022 with the master's degree. And then I think after that, I want to work in industry for a little while, uh, maybe pursue a PhD in the future and work on some, some new solar panels and fuel cells. But that is where I'm at right now. And I'm going to pass it on to Mia. If you have questions for me, just drop them in the questions box. Thank yep. you. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Mia. Um, I'm from Queens, New York, like I said before, and I'm the class of 2023 for um, biomedical engineering. So I just pretty much finished my first year at RPI um, uh, last year, and I took an early art semester last summer, which really helped got rid of a lot of the prereqs that I have. Right now, I'm taking a lot of interesting courses that I'll probably tell you later on. Um, so why did I choose RPI? was because um, it's 2.5 hours away from home. Uh, I live down in New York City, so it's not that far of a drive where obviously I can't like go home and visit, but it's also like a good distance away from home. Um, a lot of people in my high school ended up kind of staying in the city. And for me, I wanted to kind of expand a little bit uh, out into a different city or a different community. Uh, so RPI was kind of giving that perfect opportunity for me. And I knew specifically I wanted to go into a STEM school. I wanted to enter a STEM major. So picking a school or a college that has a really good STEM program and also has a lot of research opportunities and um, funding for STEM research. That was really important to me, as long, uh, along with the co-term program, which was obviously graduating in one year for your master's, like um, that's saving money and also um, kind of getting my master's early. That was also really appealing to me. So I chose biomedical engineering because I, just really liked biology in high school. And um, I also really liked the aspect of the engineering side and um, kind of, it's just that it's a really broad field. Um, I feel like I can expand into a lot of different areas. Uh, I'm really interested in stem cell engineering, so that's one way I can expand into. But also at the same time, if I don't wanna do research, I can always expand into working at pharmaceutical or medical device companies doing um, QA uh, quality assurance or um, research and development if I wanted to do that, um, which is really cool. I'm kind of using my co-op opportunity coming up to decide if I want to pursue a PhD in stem cell engineering and do research or, um, you know, like go work at a company after um, I get my master's and um, do some you know, research development or quality, quality assurance work. So I am involved heavily in student government on campus. Um, it was just kind of, I did track and field in high school for all four years. I was captain for two years and I really wanted to join the track team uh, at RPI, but unfortunately I had an injury, so I wasn't able to do that. And for me, I've always wanted to do student government back in high school, 
So I really wanted to kind of reach out of my comfort zone and try something new at RPI um, as a freshman. So I decided to join student government, which is really unique at RPI too, because we're actually a student run student government. <laughs> so um, we have obviously the three branches of Senate, the executive board, which is like a treasury board that I'm on, and also the judicial board. Uh, so the executive board, we focus on allocating funds. Um, so basically we take all of the student activity fee that every student has to pay on campus, um, and we distrib distribute that over to student programs and funding for the gym, the Mueller Center that we have, funding for student, um, for any other student programs and also funding for clubs on campus. So I thought it was just something really exciting and really cool that you know other colleges don't offer. And I'm able to get that kind of like financial budgeting knowledge while interacting with a lot of different clubs on campus just by joining the executive board. I'm also the vice chair of the club operations committee this year. Um, I've been on this committee for two years. It's like a committee under the board where we work with new clubs and also old, old clubs that want to come back and get a budget. Um, so through that, I really got to interact with a lot of different clubs on campus and kind of help them out with their needs and also um, pretty much interact and help out like people who want to form a club on campus, which is really cool. Besides from that, I'm also involved in Greek life on campus. For me, it was also one of those why not decisions because I just wanted to try something new in college because I did you know, track for four years back in high school. So I just wanted to kind of expand my circle and try something new. Greek life is definitely really different at RPI. Um, it's more, it was really more about, even though like there are social, mostly is social sororities and fraternities, we're really more about kind of bridging together and um, forming that community, especially since RPI's uh, ratio of men to women is pretty, um, I guess, high for men and low for women. I would, I joined the sorority really just to meet more women on campus and to have that kind of um, bond and sisterhood type of uh, community where I had that team support back in high school and I really kind of missed that dynamic. So joining a sorority really helped out. Um, I was also in the Air Rifle Club really briefly. Um, I really, really hope to go back after, um, for next semester after this, this whole COVID thing hopefully is over. Um, so it's really cool. We have an indoor shooting range. It used to be a fully functional one. Um, but now it's converted because of ventilation issues, it's converted to an air rifle club. So it's really cool. Um, I don't think a lot of colleges have this. Um, the advisor for that club is actually a um, Vietnam War veteran. So he kind of teaches a lot of techniques and um, I got a really good experience just learning from him. And eventually you get to also um, enter target, target shooting competitions, which is, I think it's super, super cool. Um, I really like coffee shops. I really like exploring areas. So I wanted to share with you guys some of my favorite spots in Troy, because um, Troy is a honestly a not really heard of town, I would feel like. Um, telling my friends and family, like, this is where I'm moving to for college, and this is where my college is. They never really heard of where the city is from. Um, so a lot of people have that impression that it might be a boring town with not a lot of things to do, which is completely false. So there's a lot of really neat, like tiny uh, food places that you can go to. It's a really big, I guess, small business town. So there's the Whistling Kettle for any tea and snacks. I work at this Poke Bowl, actually. So Poke Bowls are really nice. And then um, during the weekends, we visit the farmer's market really often where a lot of um, kind of small businesses come to sell their fresh produce and also their some of their um, products. And the Colony Center is only a 20 minute drive from campus to Albany. And that it's a huge, huge mall. So overall, I think there are a lot of opportunities to, you know, hang with your friends after a stressful week 
and to go to some of these places to, you know, have fun and relax. So I wanted to talk about my first year experience because I it was one of the questions I got asked the most um, my first year. So obviously adjusting to college is definitely different. RPI has a really rigorous academic program, which obviously it's a really good thing because it forces you to learn a lot and definitely puts you ahead of um, people from other colleges perhaps but it can definitely be stressful and adjusting to um, like this curriculum, like right fresh out of high school is definitely difficult. Um, as a freshman, I took really specific, major specific courses that um, my other peers from high school that went to other colleges kind of would, were not taking until maybe their sophomore or junior year. So I got the opportunity to take CAD, to take um, engineering courses my first semester of high school. Um, so that definitely was a really dramatic and different change and definitely really difficult. But I think the environment at RPI really helped out just because that everyone knows that academics is difficult, but, and that's the reason why everyone kind of helps out. It's not really competitive for say, it's more of like, everyone helping each other out. So that dynamic really helped because I felt comfortable reaching out for help. I felt comfortable reaching out to professors, to TAs, to my peers, because there is no really judgment about things that you don't know. It's more of like everyone knows, everyone is struggling one time or another, and everyone's willing to help. So I thought that was really nice. Um, I Those are some pictures that I had for freshman year. The, um, the, the bottom two pictures is our student union, so that's where I hung out the most. And um, there's a lot of places to eat over there, and there's also where I did homework until 1 a.m. before. And that's that's been a, a bonding place for me, for me and my friends, so that was really nice. And that's also a picture of um, my dorm in freshman year in, on, in Warren Hall, and that's a that's a picture of me by um, downtown where um, you had your first week of um, kind of like student orientation or NRB week, which was really, really nice too. Um, so yeah, this is my first year experience that I wanted to share with you guys. Great, well, thanks, Mia. Uh, and we can welcome everybody else back. So. Cassie and Tahir as well. Amir, I need the uh, bespoke bolt hookup at some point. I need to go uh, for months. I still haven't gone, but if you work there and give me a discount, I'll be there right away. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure there are discount opportunities. Oh, the discount, you left. Well, hopefully she comes back. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I pressed the wrong okay. button. <laughs> <laughs> and Cassie, congrats on your position at JPL. Yeah. Thank you. We're good. Yeah, that was a surprise to everyone. <laughs> We're so proud. <laughs> yeah. So we had a few questions come in uh, during the the presentations as well, and I just put up a slide. Uh, different ways to follow us, just as a little plug. I think the admissions Instagram page is a good way to learn a little bit more about Rensselaer. We do student takeovers, uh, day in the life. It's just a good sense when you can't physically visit campus and kind of see that student as much to get a, a little bit of an insight. Uh, and then we also did a number of admissions webinars for the incoming students this past fall, and they're all on our YouTube admissions page as well. Uh, but we had a couple of questions come in. Uh, so there's one from Daniela. And it says, what do you like most and least about RPI? So feel free to take it whoever feels uh, inclined to. I could say that my favorite thing about RPI, and I think Tahira and Mia might agree with me, is the people yeah. on campus. You know, the RPI community, everyone is just so supportive and excited and driven and passionate. And it really has been such a cool place to get to know so many different people. Right. And, you know, I get to know Tahira. Oh, oh she's over there. <laughs> right. And she's a chemical engineer from Arizona who I wouldn't have met otherwise. Right. But we met through RPI. And so it's just been like a really awesome place to meet new people and work on hard problems all together. I would say, I guess my least favorite part would be the winters. 
Um, there's one time where there was like two two feet of snow on the ground when I came back from Thanksgiving break. That was not fun. <laughs> and there's a lot of hills, so lots of hiking. <laughs> I think I don't know. This is I don't know. This is just me. I like to eat. I like to have food very close to me if I'm like studying at the library and I want to go eat. But if the library is closed, if the library cafe is closed and I'm there like 11, I have to walk all the way to the union <laughs> and get food and then come back. So more more campus food options close to the library after like a nighttime. That would be nice. That's a very specific request. I like that. Uh, yeah. That's <laughs> We've had uh, a couple of other questions coming in about dorm living. Uh, so the dorm opportunities coming in, and then how long do you have to live on campus? Then when can you move on ca off campus? I'm not sure if anybody wants to kind of run through their experience and kind of give an overview as well. Yeah. Yeah, I could go first um, since I just, you know, moved out of my freshman dorm a couple months ago. <laughs> um, so I live on Freshman Hill. So most most freshmen live on Freshman Hill um, their first semester and well first year and um, it's a really I guess nice area because it, it's really close to the academic side of campus. You just walk across the bridge and really there's like common areas where you get to kind of meet a lot of people within your um, your dorm and um, you get to definitely visit your friend's dorm and those common areas have people from that hall. So it's like all the freshmen are kind of there and it's really nice to be able to kind of talk to each other and meet um, people who like literally live next door that you don't know, but you might share classes with. So uh, that's definitely really cool. And you get to live, you have to, I think, live in dorms for uh, freshman and sophomore year. So right now the situation is a little different. I'm remote, so I'm living off campus. Um, but it's pretty close to campus too. So I get to see some of my friends uh, also. Great, sorry. Uh, we also had a question from Anthony. Uh, so this is maybe, uh, how difficult is it to balance the challenging curriculum and playing sports? So seeking to play basketball at collegiate level. I'm not sure if you've had that experience with balancing academics and extracurriculars or just in general with any particular sports or just even with your own extracurriculars and finding that that work-life balance a little bit more? I can talk about the people that I know who are in <laughs> their athletics. Um, I know that they have, there is a like academic slash academic liaison. I think I said academic twice, but athletic and academic liaison who can help you Kind of if you have a an away game or something or a tournament to go to possibly in another country help you um talk to your professors and adjust like i need to take the test at this day at this time and i'll be away for the rest of the week um so they they're helpful with that outside of that it's just time management so knowing your schedule knowing when you're going to have time knowing when you're actually going to be at practice or at a game and knowing when you're going to be in class and then finding the time in between to um do your homework study for your exams and relax with your friends and also like eat scheduling time to eat as well if you need to also put that in your schedule um but it's definitely possible there are a lot of students involved in athletics and they're still full-time engineering students so you can do it if you actually want to talk to um, a current student who's doing both, we have at least one admissions ambassador who is involved in athletics. So feel free to either, you know, contact the RPA admissions Instagram, or we also have an admissions uh, email that you can contact us students that maybe Tahira could pop in the chat for everyone to just, you know, if you have a question, you want to talk to a student, we can connect you that way and you can talk Great. to them. Um, Thanks, directly. Cassie. Uh, so there's a few questions yeah. about co-ops as well. Uh, so essentially, how many co-ops can a student feasibly participate in during their time at RPI? And are they limited to summer only? So obviously that goes into the ARCH program a little bit more. Uh, so I'll be happy to run through that unless somebody wants to take it as well. Me? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we have a program at Rensselaer called the ARCH, which you may have been maybe familiar with if you attended our admission sessions prior to this. Uh, so essentially students, the, the summer prior to their junior year, all rising juniors will do a full semester of classes that summer. I know you're probably doing virtual learning right now, and the last thing you want to do is kind of summer school, but there are a lot of benefits to it. Uh, so you're the only students on campus, the undivided attention of faculty, additional research opportunities, 
uh, pop-up lectures. Uh, the Capital District region is a great place to be in the summertime as well. But it's really set up to enable you to do an away experience in your junior year. Since you've already done one of your junior year semesters that summer prior, you have that flexibility to then do a co-op opportunity, which is a six to nine month placement with a company, an internship, extensive research on or off campus, additional away semester. You can even take a semester off as well. So it's really geared to give you that co-op opportunity then in your junior year. Uh, but obviously you can potentially do more than that in different time frames. It's just, correct me if I'm wrong, it's going to extend the amount of time you'll probably likely be at Wednesday since it's taking away from your course credits and the classes you'll be taking. So it's really set up for 100% of students to have that opportunity to do one co -op. But then after that, I assume it's gonna be more internships and kind of additional calls would take you additional time to graduate. But we'll, we'd love to hear your experience. I know you touched on it a little bit, but if you have any insight into co-ops or internships and balancing that out with your academics, uh, feel free to share. So I would say feasibly, you can take as many co-ops as you want. <laughs> you know, as, as Dan mentioned, it will extend your time at RPI. Uh, my class is the last class that did not have to do the summer arts program. So my co-op, I took for fun. <laughs> Essentially, I took on my own will because I wanted that job. It's my dream job. So I took it and now I'm a semester behind in graduation. So I should have graduated in May. It's up to you of when you want to graduate, you know, um, but it won't be when you're away on co-op or a semester away, you don't pay tuition. So it's still the same price of a, a four-year school will be. In my class was the first class that was required to do the art. So last, I spent all of 2019 on campus learning at RPI, finished junior year from summer to December. And then this spring was my away semester. So that's when I went back home and had my internship. And then just to clarify, a co-op is like six to eight months and then internships are usually 10 to 12 weeks. So that'll be like this really summer internship and then co-op, some people like to do like a spring co-op and then maybe a summer internship or you could do one big co-op. It really depends on what's available to you. Perfect, thank you all. And we had a question from Jessica. She said, do you feel outnumbered as a girl in your engineering courses? I don't. I, I I would say my engineering courses. I, you know, you walk in and it's people are just excited to be there and to be learning and taking a course. So I wouldn't say necessarily. I, I even see a, a difference in the gender ratio of and on campus or any course really. Um, I think some of the, I look back to my high school classes and I did go to a public high school. You know, both both genders are there. And my physics class had 16 people and four were girls. So that was a 25% ratio. And RPI, I think we're up to probably a 68-32 ratio. So that's actually better <laughs> than my high school classes were. Um, so I wouldn't say outnumbered. I wouldn't say I don't even notice it personally. Uh, I guess for me, I really didn't notice it that much in my classes just because one, I guess I took a lot of like prereq courses as a freshman where, you know, pretty much everyone's taking it, men and women on campus, no matter what your major is. And the courses I'm taking right now that are major specific, biomedical engineering is actually a pretty good 50-50 split. I want to say probably maybe a little bit more women are in it rather than men. Um, so definitely, um, I personally don't really feel the ratio. Um, I mean, I feel it socially because a lot of my friends ended up um, being guys my first semester of uh, my first year at RPI. Um, and that was kind of the reason why I decided to join a sorority. And I know there are also a lot of different organizations on campus that help out women just because kind of realizing that there is a ratio. Um, definitely, there are professional organizations that help women get more opportunities for STEM um, careers. And there are also, um, um, I would say, mentoring. Also, um, as a first year student, you get a women mentor if you are a woman on campus. So um, that's really always really nice to just to know that at least that support system is there if you need it. Yeah, I don't, I don't notice it anymore. It's probably because it's my fourth year and I've just gotten used to it. But um, I mean, it's, it's, it is what it is. Like I haven't, I don't think a lot of people have ever encountered like any 
outward, like just blatant sexism from if you're in a group with um, some men, you have a group project to do, like um, mostly everyone's pretty respectful and acknowledging that you're there and make sure that they listen to you when you have to speak. Absolutely. Uh, at least from our perspective, I feel like it's something we're cognizant of. Uh, the STEM fields in general, they're a little bit more male dominant. I, I think we do a nice job at Rensselaer. I know you mentioned the female, female mentor program. So that's based in the School of Engineering, but that crosses all of the different schools as well. So it's just an extra touch point. And again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe there's monthly socials. It's just an extra point person you can connect to. It's, it's something yeah. we're obviously striving for to get that <laughs> diversity increased as we go. Uh, but it takes a little time. And then we had a question from Philip. He said, are all the engineering degrees eight semesters of math, specifically mechanical or aerospace? No. <laughs> I, I believe um, for, uh, so, so aero and mechanical have pretty similar tracks until about junior year. And that's when we kind of get more specialized. Um, but I believe aero actually requires the most amount of math and that's four math courses, okay. right? It's, we go like Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, Calc 4, we call them multivariate and linear algebra and then uh, okay. differential equations. Um, so I think uh, mo most people just had to take those four. So I think to hear you only had to take yeah, three I took of three them, and then I took right? multivariate for my elective <laughs> for fun. For fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so usually only the first four semesters or so, or if you transfer in with AP credit in calculus one or two. So, Perfect. no. <laughs> I think that's most engineering majors. It's three to four semesters of math, I would, I would say. Okay. So, we just have a few more moments. So, I know there's a number of questions in the chat box we probably not going to get around to. Uh, so, again, we dropped the admissions. I'll drop the admissions uh, contact information in there in my own email. So, we can follow up individually on those. But just have a few more questions. But a question from Zachary. It says, how is your adjustment to freshman year in terms of both uh, immediate class difficulty and overall work-life balance? Um, so I guess I could speak to that. Um, it was definitely difficult just because the high school dynamic was really like, you know, eight classes, I think a, a day or something. And then um, your homework is kind of due by the week. But then with college is a lot of time management um, issues. I don't particularly think the courses are hard to the point where like it's it's I'm struggling. Um, maybe right now I am because that's major specific courses. But freshman year I definitely wasn't struggling with like um, I guess content it was more of time management just because you get your syllabus and it's kind of like everything is due at a specific time and you really don't get that much reminders. So you just kind of have to stay on top and start planning and start, you know, meeting the deadlines like on your own. That was just the most difficult part because it's so different from high school. Um, I would say that it's much nicer to have like two to three classes a day compared to like eight courses that throughout the day compared to high school. Um, so definitely living away from home and adjusting to a new time management system is was the most difficult part. I think for me, like I, my school, my high school prepared me pretty well with every single class I took was honors, honors classes, um, and I was I was ready with studying and try, learning to write papers like quickly if I ever had to write something that skills kind of decrease now <laughs> doing more engineering but um yeah as mia said it depends on your time management you really have to rely on yourself because no one's going to tell you to do your homework no one's going to tell you have a test coming up you have to figure it out or ask your friends um so you know when things are happening and when they're due Um, I would just agree with that. You know, I think you learn, this is like also, I'll tie in here, like my best piece of advice for any school you go to, even RPI, you know, you really have to learn to advocate for yourself. In high school and all your lower school classes and stuff, you had parents or your teacher was there really making sure you were succeeding and on track. In college, it's on you, right? Eventually you're going to make friends and professors are going to like cheer you on too. But at the beginning, you really have to find what works best for you. If you need to stay in the library, then you have to go out there and you do it yourself. If you need extra help on this one concept that you're not getting that all your friends are getting, go after the professor and get that extra time in office hours, right? So, you know, do what you have to do to be successful. 
as I would say. Perfect. Well, thank you. I think we uh, wrap up this session at 2.30. We are at 2.30 now, so I want to be cognizant, see if you need any restroom breaks before the next session. Uh, take a little break. I know there were still some questions in the chat box that we didn't get to. Uh, so I dropped my email and uh, contact information down there. So feel free to email me directly. If I don't know the answer, I'll connect with either a student or faculty that can answer your questions as well.